So at, at this point, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to go through the presentation. We'll have, after your 15 minutes, we'll have Q&A. And then once again, for all the attendees on the line, we'll have then open it up to just general conversation and any questions that others might have. Thank you. Thanks very much, and we're certainly glad. So my name is Kyle Swanson. I'm the Dean of the College of Sciences at Metro State University, and we have a lot of activity going on in cybersecurity, and we're, again, thrilled to be talking with you about it and some good opportunities for you as well, not only from the educational perspective, but ways that uh, we believe we can help you as you you know begin to think about your cybersecurity posture for your businesses there. And I'm, so I'm joined by uh, Professor Faisal Kaleem. He's the uh, program director for our cybersecurity programs at Metro State. and uh, my uh, partner in crime in uh, really bringing Metro State to the forefront um, in cybersecurity for the state of Minnesota. So you can go to the next slide, Faisal. Thank you, Kyle. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, a little bit about Metro State. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with us, you know, we're located in uh, our main campus is in uh, downtown, around downtown, east side of St. Paul, Minnesota. We uh, sit up uh, overlooking the sort of interchange between uh, 94 and 52 there, um, just uh, east of downtown there. So um, we're a <clears throat> member of the Minnesota State System. So along with our partner institutions, Mankato State, uh, Winona, got to remember them all, Moorhead, Bemidji, St. Cloud, and uh, Southwest State. So we're one of the seven universities within this within the Minnesota State System. Um, and we're, but we're the uh, urban focused uh, institution within the system there so when we uh, you know we're proud of our mission which is you know focused on socioeconomic advancement for our students um, and you know as part of that we uh, serve a lot of different veterans a lot of veterans for example a lot of uh, underrepresented groups uh, a lot of adult students actually uh, attend metro state so um, our cybersecurity programs are relatively new we just started our bachelor's of cybersecurity in 2019 and our master's here a couple of years ago but we're uh, making great progress we're a designated um, center of academic Excellence in Cyber Defense Education by the National Security Agency, um, and we are <clears throat> our programs are high quality in the sense that uh, many of our graduates, for example, work for uh, State of Minnesota IT. Um, we uh, and we are nationally ranked in our cybersecurity programs there as well. So um, we're doing a lot of things. We're seeing you know very rapid growth. For example, in our cybersecurity programs, we're up to north of 300 majors from zero in our cyber programs there. So we're uh, you know making a lot of progress there, and you know getting very deep uh, connections with our community partners. So you can go ahead and move on to the next slide there, Faisal. So um, so we're going to talk to you a little bit about cybersecurity, just to you know give you a sense of what it is, because it's probably a word that you've seen floating around in one form or another. You know, if you were watching the Super Bowl there uh, the other night, you saw the CrowdStrike commercial. You know, what is CrowdStrike and what, <laughs> what are they talking about in terms of cyber threats and things like that? So so when we think about cybersecurity, you know, we're talking about protection in some fashion there. So um, at least at the level that's of interest to you and your business there. So, uh, you know, we're protecting your computer systems, your data, your networks. Um, and they're being protected from digital attacks. So folks who would come in from the outside, for example, and do something to disrupt your business, to take your data, to you know corrupt what you're trying to accomplish as a small business in some fashion there. So, um, and you know, the curious thing about cybersecurity is that it's very easy to think of it in terms of technology. And that's what the CrowdStrike folks on the, uh, the commercial on the Super Bowl is about. They're about uh, tech. But a lot of it has to do with people. In fact, about 80% of it has to do with people. Do you have policies? Do you have processes? Do you have the right sort of technology elements, the right sort of training in place to actually create a an effective defense from a cyber attack? And, you know, if you... Uh, <clears throat> You know, for example, you know, many of you have probably heard of ransomware. You know, you can have all of the technology basically in the world in place, and somebody in your in your uh, organization downloads a, a bad file onto your uh, <clears throat> server off of a, a email attachment. Um, it's not going to make any difference. So uh, you have to have the right sorts of training and mindsets, and you know, got policies and procedures in place in order to keep yourself safe. So we can go to the next slide there, Faisal. So, <clears throat> um, so you know, cyber is becoming more and more important, you know, to the point where it certainly is, you know, vital from the national security end of things, but also, you know, in terms of <clears throat> business operations, you know, you can look at a company like Target, for example, that had a major hack into their point of sale um, <clears throat> infrastructure there in the sort of mid 20. 
tens, um, you were talking you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in damages that were done from all of the records that were stolen from them at that point in time. So, you know, we're, when you're talking nationwide, we're looking at uh, numbers that get into the trillions of dollars. Um, <clears throat> You know, and this does not only impact uh, large businesses, government entities, but it also then comes down to small businesses as well. And, you know, even even entities like school districts, um, University of Minnesota had, uh, what, two million plus records um, that were taken from them in a cyber attack here just over the past year. So, you know, it's affecting organizations at all sizes. You know, the important thing to remember from a small business perspective is, you know, a cyber attack, if it does occur to you, can shut you down. And by that, I mean lock you out of your computers for days, weeks, months at a time, which is, you know, for many small businesses is a fatal event that you've lost your client. You've lost your ability to, you know, use your computers in your business. Um, and the other thing that can happen is that you can have uh, records that are stolen and, you know, digital records. And if these have, you know, information on them, social security numbers, credit card numbers, whatever that are associated with those records, um, this can put you, make you liable then for, you know, <clears throat> the cost to actually recover from that. And those, again, typical number is going to be somewhere between $100 and $1,000 per record. So if you're talking, you know, again, uh, hundreds of records very quickly, the costs do add up with that. So, and that's the uh, data breach that we're talking about here. So, you know, again, somewhere in the neighborhood of a million dollars, it's really easy to get to that level when you do have a data breach. So go ahead, Faisal. Um, so, you know, again, small businesses aren't immune from this. And, you know, and again, just because <clears throat> of size, you might think that, well, I'm safe. No one's going to be paying attention. Um, people are trying to get client information. They're trying to get credit card numbers. They're trying to get um, bank accounts, you know, all of the information that you might have. On. You are muted. Yeah, Kyle, you're muted. I don't know how that happened. That's crazy. Um, have I been muted for long or just? No, 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 no. Okay. I, it's, it's, computer's got a mind of its own. Um, so small businesses, you know, you are in line, certainly uh, in the mind of cyber <clears throat> attackers. Um, but, you know, just because of the limits that are placed on you as a small business, you don't have resources to hire a cybersecurity staff. You don't have resources to build in, you know, all sorts of technological protections and other things like that. It's very challenging for small businesses to actually, <clears throat> you know, fend off these attacks, quite honestly. So, and, you know, again, when we look at the numbers that are associated with this, it runs from the thousands to the hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on what is actually happening and what, what actually happens there in one form or another. So, so it's very threatening from that perspective, um, you know, and again, then part of what we'll talk about as we get a little bit further is, you know, the type you got muted again, Kyle. I don't understand. Teams seems to have taken. Muted again. Every time someone is coming in, yeah. I'm getting muted. I don't know who's muting me, but um, at any rate, um, so <clears throat> there's a tremendous risk out there. Um, the good news is, is that there's steps that you can take that are relatively low cost in terms of your policies, in terms of how you train your staff and other things like that, that can protect from a significant majority of these cyber attacks. So let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> um, so just to give you a sense of the number of attacks that are going on in Minnesota, these are these are um, <clears throat> public sector attacks. So you see on uh, both public and private sector attacks, and some of them are relatively large. Um, you know, again the. Uh, St. Paul uh, School District, for example, 43,000 student records done. Um, University of Minnesota, I mentioned that one already. Millions of uh, social security numbers. Um, entire cities, um, phone systems being taken down. Data breaches all over the place from university perspective. Allianz Life Insurance Company, massive company, Fortune 500 company. Um, <clears throat> you know, so these attackers are out there and the risk is very much real. So, and we can go to... Uh, honing down 
ransomware, and this is too small to actually see what's going on there. But, you know, again, somewhere in the neighborhood of reported attacks, you know, we're talking in the tens to twenties per year. And these again are ones that were just elevated to the point where they were reported, um, you know, ransom amounts spanning in the hundreds to thousands to millions of dollars there in one form or another. But, you know, again, a lot of these are small and medium businesses there in one form or another. Maury's Auto Group, you know, all of us have seen the commercials and driven by their auto dealerships. Um, so they're out there um, and the risk again is very much real. So with that, I'm going to go to the next slide and turn things over to my colleague Faisal Kaleem to talk a little bit more about sort of the details of what's uh, what's going on, why are folks attacking, and then I'll come back in to talk a little bit about how Metro State can help. Thank you, Carl, and I understand that there is uh, not enough time and uh, you know we would love to come uh, to you guys and do a detailed presentation on this thing. So I would try to cover as much information as possible. Uh, but it, it it will not be you know in detail. So, uh, but again, as I said, that you know uh, we will definitely can come and do a detailed presentation. So, in order to understand you know the cyber attacks, it's very very important to understand who the attackers are, and there are different type of attackers. You know, again, in this slide, uh, we just talk about like you know uh, the attackers could be uh, government sponsored. So, for example, if a particular country is sponsoring, they are called nation state uh, attackers. And typically their motivation is geopolitical. Uh, like think about, you know, the war between Russia and Ukraine. So there is a bunch of cyber attack going on, you know, between the two countries and so on. Cyber criminals are the one that are actually coming after your business and so on. Uh, again, it doesn't mean that the nation state attacker cannot come after your business. They can definitely come with different purposes. Hectivists, terrorist group, you know, they have some sort of ideological motivation. The only difference is terrorists also involves violence. Uh, thrill seekers are like, you know, the people like who actually would like to brag about something. So they find something somewhere, some sort of weakness in somebody's system, and then they just go out there and say, you know what, oh, I found uh, in ABC company this particular, you know, weakness and, you know, uh, announced to the whole world. And then obviously the most important one is the insider threat. And when I say insider threat, insider threat could be, you know, on a malicious uh, basis, or it could be like, you know, they made a mistake. So for example, uh, you know, you have a web server and uh, you have somebody who take care of the web server and uh, it's a Friday evening and they're rushing out of the office and uh, accidentally they trip and then they trip over and then they trip, uh, they unplug the, uh, power supply of the of the of the computer, so bringing down the entire system. So it could be a malicious, it could be unintentional as well. Now with that, uh, it's important to understand the different type of threats. Again, as I said, I am I we don't have enough time. What are we going to also do is that we can make these slides available to you guys as well, uh, so that you guys also can take a look at them in more detail with all the links and everything. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just talk about just important attacks over here. Uh, so the most important thing, as Kyle was talking about, is the ransomware. This is one of the fastest growing, you know, uh, form of cyber attacks. And this is, as Kyle just showed the slide, you know, that slide was only Minnesota specific. But, you know, there are so many high profile breaches where ransomware was uh, involved. So it's basically an attack where the attacker are able to install some sort of malware on your computer and that malware encrypts all your data. And then obviously the, the hackers, they actually demand some sort of payment to decrypt the, uh, to provide you with a key, a decryption key. But most of the time, you know, uh, understand this thing that even though uh, you are able to pay the ransom, but there is no guarantee that uh, you will be able to recover all the encrypted data. Hila, did you say something? Okay. Then, 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 then the next type of attack, and again, I'm saying I, I have to skip a couple of things over here. So social engineering and phishing attacks. Now these are, I, I guess, uh, again, one of the easiest way uh, to get into somebody's system. So for example, I'm pretty sure that most of you guys have heard the term phishing, which is all about like if somebody sends you a fake email with some sort of links that actually point you to a particular website, a fake website where you they ask you to provide your credential. So basically what you're doing it, not only you're providing your credential to the website, but at the same time you're providing credentials to the to the hackers who can come back and then actually log on to your actual website using those uh, credentials. And there are so many different forms of phishing. Uh, email is the most common one. There is something called a smishing, which is through the SMS or your text messages. There's also something called wishing, 
which is through the voicemail. So sometimes, you know, you probably have uh, seen that people, you know, sent you or uh, or left you with voice messages and, you know, say, hey, I have something going on. Please call him back on this particular number or you we have detected some sort of criminal activity on your phone or your computer. Please call on this number and so on. Those are called wishing attack. Then the other attack which I would like to quickly talk about is the supply chain attack because I know that most of the businesses are involved with the other vendors or suppliers. So imagine, I'll just give you an example. So for example, a particular phone, let's say iPhone, you know, uh, it basically is manufactured in a particular country, let's say China, okay? Imagine if somebody is able to get into uh, the supply chain and, you know, install some sort of uh, back doors into these phones. You know, when was the last time you actually check whether your iPhone actually have uh, a malware or something? You know, basically it, it is coming from the manufacturer. You trust them and basically you, you know, take it that way. But again, supply chain is all about infiltrating trusted vendors or suppliers. So it's very, very important, you know, to make sure that whoever you select, you, sh you should trust them. OK, so that's basically the other one. Uh, I would also suggest to talk about the the advanced persistent threat. This is basically where they are able to install uh, a malware into the system and then they wait for the right time to attack. Typically, you know, it's not it, they are not going to come after small businesses and so on, but typically that's basically for mid-sized businesses or large businesses that they can install those kind of malwares and, you know, when the time comes and they, they strike. Uh, insider threat, as I already mentioned, discontent, disgruntled employee. So if you have an employee, you know, who is disgruntled, uh, they can, they can, uh, they can, um, you know, release the, uh, some of the confidential document to the public. So insider threat is also something very, very important to uh, take care of. Zero day exploit is another one. And the reason why the zero day exploit happened, because if you're not performing pro proper updates or if you're not patching your system on a regular basis, and if the, if the hackers are able to discover vulnerabilities or weaknesses which were not patched, uh, they can come and then they can actually, you know, uh, 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 take over your system. So zero day attacks are the one which typically where there are no patches available or there are no updates available. And this is where the most time, most of the time the attackers or the hackers can strike. Um, and then again, I don't need to you know, worry about the others one, but again, as I said, that these are some of the attacks that are most important. I just want to quickly give you an example of the phishing attack over here. So they take a look at this email over here, and I want to make sure you understand this thing that if you take a look at this figure, this basically show you the characteristic of the phishing email that includes combination of many things. So, for example, you can see there's a suspicious sender over here. There's an unnecessary you know, urgency in the email. There's a request for personal or sensitive information, including passwords or PIN number or bank information and so on. Uh, as you can see that there is there might be some sort of uh, copyright or business branding example, for example, Microsoft logo that appears legitimate but it includes copyrights uh, intended to look official. You know, you will find out some sort of misspellings or incorrect grammar, or you will also see omission of your name or usage of a part of your name, you know, you do not typically use. So there are many, many indicators in the phishing email. Again, as I said, that phishing itself is a big topic and we would love to come and talk about phishing. You know, we can do a complete session on just phishing. Okay, some quick, uh, uh, misconception that we want to talk about quickly. Uh, first of all, it's a misconception that, hey, you know what, uh, because, you know, I'm a small business or, you know, because I typically don't deal with a particular type of data, they're not going to come after us, okay? Understand this thing that regardless of the type or regardless of the industry, everybody is susceptible to cyber attack. And the reason why small businesses or mid-sized businesses are more susceptible because they, the hacker knows that there are weaker cybersecurity defense mechanisms. So you're easier to you know, hack uh, by these uh, guys. Cybersecurity is a technology issue, wrong. Cybersecurity is not just a technology issue, but it basically involves the people and the processes as well. Keep in mind, people are the weakest link in this whole game of cybersecurity. Uh, Cybersecurity requires a huge financial investment. Once again, wrong. Uh, yes, there will be some sort of investment, but just think about it. Would you rather be ransomware and paying 
million dollars or whatever as compared to paying some sort of subscription fee to make sure that your business is protected. Um, cybersecurity is a one time project. Again, wrong because cybersecurity is ongoing. Every single second there are attacks coming in. So it's uh, it's very important to understand that you keep you know everything up to date. Uh, cybersecurity is only IT's department responsibility. So once again, it's not the technical issue. It's not the IT department's responsibility. Everybody will be responsible. Management is responsible for making sure that there are appropriate security policies. Finance is responsible for making sure that there is uh, enough budget for the cybersecurity and so on. Um, cybersecurity insurance will cover all the losses from a cyber attack. Once again, this is absolutely, absolutely wrong. They will probably you know, cover a few things, but when it comes to uh, covering the cost like business interruption, you know, reputational damage, or the full scope of legal liability, that would not be covered. Um, and then finally, you know, cybersecurity can be achieved by technology alone. Again, I already talked about this thing, that it's not a technology issue, but the people, the processes, everybody's involved. Now, the question is, what you can do. So what we can do in a, in a few seconds over here, we can just give you a simple ABCs of small business cybersecurity. So the very first thing, you would like to know your, you need to assess your assets, risk, and resources. So what that means, that means that you need to know what is what you need to protect, what's your valuable asset that you want to protect. Then you need to build your security policy, okay? just. Think about you know, what is allowed and what is not allowed. Okay, so spell it out. Choose your security controls. And after the policy is done, then it's going to be much easier for you to be able to identify the technology, the, the practices to enforce those policies. Deploy your controls, okay, which is obviously you need to not only deploy them, but at the same time, you need to test them on a you know, regular basis to ensure that the controls are working for, the, for your business. Education, and this is the number one thing I always say, training, training, training. If you, regardless of multi-million dollar investment in the cybersecurity, if your staff is not properly educated or trained, cybersecurity attack is imminent. Okay, it's going to happen. So raise awareness, reinforce policies, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then obviously further assess audits and tests. Keep on making sure that, hey, everything is updated. Uh, you know, because obviously business is going to change, threat is going to evolve. So that is the reason, you know, it's not like a one time process. It's basically like, you know, ongoing uh, process. So there are a few tips over here. Again, no, not enough time. So I just put some tips. Educate and train your employees. Right? This is the number one thing. Conduct risk assessment. And Kyle is going to talk about this thing and how we can also help you with your risk assessment. Implement some basic cyber hygiene practices and which, which what means is a strong password. Are you updating your software on a regular basis? Are you using multi-factor authentication? Backup, backup, backup. When was the last time you performed the backup on your critical data? That's very, very important, especially think about the ransomware. If the hackers are able to encrypt the data and then you are not able to pay the ransomware, your data is gone. So backup, backup, backup. Leverage free and low cost tool. I mean, you may not be aware of these things, but there are so many uh, free tools available. At the same time, sometimes that you know there is a there are tools available at low cost. But understand this thing. You know, you have to understand where you are getting the tools from. So do not go on any website to get to obtain the free tools because those websites may be the websites created by the hackers for you to be able to install those free tools. So be careful where you get those free tools from. Adopt a layered security approach. So it's not like that you just simply apply security only on your computer. When I say layered security, you are talking about you know, uh, physical security, network security, uh, endpoint security, uh, application security, so multiple layers of security. So the idea is if one layer is compromised, you still have other three layers you know, that can stand in front of the attack. Uh, Secure your network. Again, we kind of talk about it, install firewalls or intrusion detection systems or antivirus software and so on. Uh, it's very, very important that we have to develop and sec enforce security policies. We need to regularly update and patch the system. That's another number one cause. If you do not update or patch your system on a regular basis, if you leave the weakness behind, 
It's just a matter of anybody to be able to scan your system from the Internet. And yes, they can come from the Internet, scan your system, and they can discover those vulnerabilities and attack. Uh, do you have an incident response plan? That's also very, very important in case of incident. You know how you want to react and how do you want to come back uh, as quickly as possible? And this is where the IRPs or the incident response plan comes in. Limit access to sensitive data. You don't want to provide access to all your sensitive data to everybody in your organization. So you need to carefully think about and come up with a policy who can have access and what type of data they can have access to. Physical security is always and most of the time people don't even think about it. But imagine if the doors to your business is open and if the hackers are able to come into your office, let's say at any time, let's say at night time, then it's no, nothing can you know prevent them to you know uh, attack you. So no firewall, nothing can help you. So physical security is number one thing you know in this whole game of cyber security. If you are using cloud security, make sure that you are using them wisely. Uh, guard against physical theft. We already talked about it. Again, do not forget about those mobile devices and make sure you know when you have your uh, staff. You know, I mean, obviously, staff can take the mobile devices in the on 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 site and off site as well. So there should be some clear policy on like you know what can be installed on the mobile devices because if the staff, uh, let's say inadvertently install some application that can expose your company sensitive data game over. So again, there has to be some sort of policy about like what can be installed on the mobile devices. And again, once again, make sure you understand that you are dealing with the trusted third parties and make sure that they are also secure. Do not trust on any one of them. Do your research before you get into any sort of agreement or any sort of business uh, with the third parties. With that, I'll hand over to Kyle. All right, so we uh, now that uh, you're sufficiently scared, um, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll hopefully be able to give you a little bit of a solution. So we uh, have a wonderful opportunity. We got a significant grant, a multi-million dollar grant from the National Security Agency to launch something called a free cybersecurity clinic. So you've probably heard of free medical clinics or free legal clinics. It's similar but that to that, but for cybersecurity. And as part of this, um, we can have a group of credentialed students, masters, bachelor students, along with some professional staff do a free risk assessment on your small business. Um, no obligation to this, it takes a couple hours. It's just gonna be an interview. We're gonna talk to you about your, where you are with regard to your device security, with regard to your policies and procedures and all the other things that go along with that. Um, this is just a public service thing, so it's completely free to you. Um, we will sign a, a non-disclosure agreement with you beforehand to guarantee that we take your security, your your privacy, your confidentiality um, very seriously. And then, you know, and if you choose to continue to want to engage, you know, you can, no obligation to this, you can take that information, use it to, you know, alter what you're doing with regard to your business, or alternatively, you can have a further conversation with us about, you know, what does it mean to actually have a, a cybersecurity policies, you know, what <clears throat> was an incident response plan actually entail? You know, can you take a look at our networks and things like that to, you know, help us understand what our vulnerabilities are? You know, can you work with us to um, come up with a high cyber hygiene plan for my employees so that they can be trained there? So, <clears throat> All right, so with that, um, we can go on to the next slide there. So if you are interested in this, um, give us an email, cyber.clinic at metrostate.edu, um, and that will trigger us to reach out to you, do an intake interview, and then get a risk assessment team sign assigned to you. So again, we're uh, pretty deep into this whole business. We're currently doing risk assessments for a number of governmental entities, K-12 school districts, and other things uh, with the cooperation of a state of Minnesota IT. So we've got them uh, actively training our students to uh, do these things. So um, we, we have a lot of capacity and we are very uh, interested in um, working with you to help you out. So with that, um, we will turn things over. Um, so lots of resources. Yeah, and, and again, these are some of the links available for you guys. Uh, I know because as I said, we're going to provide you with this presentation. So these are some very, very good link from uh, FCC or FTC or SBA, uh, CISA, uh, NEST. Uh, these are not third party link. These are just uh, mostly the governmental organization which actually have tons of cybersecurity resources available for small businesses. I would really, you know, uh, encourage you guys to take a look at them and make sure that you're cyber secure. With that, thank you very much.
Yeah. So, and again, please don't hesitate to reach out to a cyber.clinic at metrostate.edu, and we are here to help. So, and apologies that. for going uh, beyond the 20 minutes. Uh, but this topic, <laughs> we can talk hours and hours. Yes. No. It was it was very informative. If if you could maybe even copy those links now and put them into the chat so people yes, can see some of them, that would be really helpful. Um, so thank you, Faisal and, and Kyle, for your information and for the offer to help our small businesses in Minnesota. Um, I encourage any of you to ask any questions of them, or you could raise your hand, you could put your questions in the chat. Um, if there is any, I'll look at the chat here. Uh, I think I just saw one. Are there good low cost tools to measure small business cybersecurity maturity assess act, assesses levels of cybersecurity protection? Actually, Any of those good tools that you were talking about? Yeah, actually, if you go on the SBA website, the link that I mentioned over here, they have some very nice tool from CISA, which is a cybersecurity infrastructure agency. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, CISA can also provide you with some uh, some uh, some of these services, but obviously CISA will take a lot of time because there's so much demand of you know out there. So you actually have to you know go into the queue, and then you know they when when your turn comes in, uh, then you know uh, then they can do an assessment. And this is the reason why we are saying that we are here to help. So again, if you go on the CISA website, they actually have a couple of tools available that can let you perform some of the uh, assessment yourself. Nice. Um, also, does it matter the business size uh, that you're requiring for your help? Nope. Again, SMBs, if you think that you are a small business, whether you are a one uh, one person or 100 people or 500 people, you, you know, but if you don't, if you think that your cybersecurity is not adequate, you should think about consulting with us. Is there, you know, please share more questions in the chat or raise your hand. Um, one question I had is either there, there's a lot to do, a lot of risks, a lot of um, things that you wanted businesses to be familiar with. Could you say if, if they have not really addressed cybersecurity in their business currently, what would maybe be the top three things you would do tomorrow <laughs> to just better protect uh, their business? Number one thing, go and take a look at if your system is updated and patched. That's the number one thing, because as I said, they're scanning, they're scanning on a daily basis, and as soon as they find your business, they will attack you. Second, take a look at your passwords. Are they weak passwords? Because nowadays technology is so powerful that even some strong password can be broken in a couple of minutes. So that's the second thing. Uh, and third thing, Cyber hygiene, cyber awareness, that's very, very important. So those are the three things. Kyle, I'm not sure if you want to man add anything else. No, um, so the email address is cyber.clinic at metrostate.edu. So, um, yeah. so yeah, there's all sorts of different controls that we have the ability to um, <clears throat> talk to you about, you know, starting with, the, you know, we're using the ICG controls, is that correct, Faisal? And then all the way up to, yep. you know, the, the cybersecurity uh, maturity model certification with the U.S. Department of Defense. If you want to be a vendor to the U.S. Department of Defense, you have to have a very rigorous um, cybersecurity um, maturity model in place. So, yeah, we have the ability to do to take a look at all sorts of different controls. Oh, I, I forgot to mention one thing, which apps is an absolute necessity nowadays. If you have not enabled multi-factor authentication on your system, do it immediately. OK, multi-factor authentication should be the number one thing apart. And especially you know, if you have a weak password, which can be easily broken. OK, so you have a second layer of defense over here. So if you have not, you know, enable it, go enable it. OK, and then uh, make sure if you're using Google or whatever cloud services you are using, every system nowadays provide these multi-factor authentication. So whether you use your smart device, uh, your smartphone uh, via SMS or via some sort of authenticator that you can install on the on your mobile phone, you just need to make sure that you have some sort of multi-factor authentication enabled on these systems. That okay. was number one. That's what that should be number one thing. Thank you. 
Um, there was a question about uh, could businesses be all across the state to benefit from your program? And uh, Kyle answered yes, that this can be done virtually. Uh, yep. For the, I just wanted to answer that for those that are on the phone and not uh, at, attending virtual uh, uh, video wise. Um, have uh, another question was, have you applied BSIMM for small business or is it too heavy? BSIMM, uh, okay, I'm not familiar with the acronym. Uh. So Tom, if you want to explain that more, we'd be happy to answer that. Um, another question, please advise on email platforms, Zo Zoho and level of security compared to Outlook, Google and other platforms. You know what? I mean, again, I'm, we are not here to endorse any platform or to talk of anything about it. But again, uh, you just need to make sure that whatever platform you are buying or you know, adopting, just do your own research. You know, and uh, and 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 find out. You know what the others are. You know, talking about. Also, make sure that you take a look at some of the previously breached that happens against any platform. How many breached happen against a particular platform? If there are so many breaches happening or so many attacks happening against a particular platform, you might want to stay away from them. Outlook is again. I'm not going to endorse anything, but again, we use Outlook. I think a lot of people uses Outlook. Outlook is 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 is. Could be a good choice. Okay, so BSIMM is building security maturity model. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So, so CMMC is a cybersecurity maturity model for uh, any businesses who wants to do businesses with DOD. So again, whether it's a BSIMM or CMMC, we we typically go for the CMMC because nowadays this is a requirement for any business who wants to do business with the DOD, they have to be CMC certified. But CMC itself, it's a set of controls that if you under, understand and adopt those controls, it's going to be just similar like to BSIMM. Okay. Um, and then there were attacks where they replicate your email. So they send and receive emails without your knowledge. Please explain. What is that text? It was a comment from Mike. I hear there are attacks where they replicate your email, so they send and receive emails without your knowledge. Spoofing, Faisal. Oh, so, like oh what okay. you, so, yeah, I, I was missing that. Okay. Yes, that's called spoofing. So, and then again, it's not just like uh, uh, spoofing, but it's part basically part of the phishing, at, you know, as well. Like, uh, you know, and, and again, right now I can actually send an email on anybody's behalf. There are a couple of uh, things available on the Internet where they can uh, I can I can I can just use those tools and I can send email, for, for example, from Kyle. And, you know, I did it one time. <laughs> I sent an email from Kyle to one of the staff member. Sometimes I send messages from, from Kyle's phone number to somebody. These are all possible. So again, the most important thing is awareness education, cyber hygiene. This cannot be protected, but the only thing is how to identify whether this is a fake email or whether it's a fake SMS. Those are the things that you need to be aware of. Okay, any other questions in the chat or raise your hand? Okay, oh, here's another one. Um, Oh yes, pass, pass keys. Yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah, pass keys are going to be becoming a standard uh, passcode pass keys. So Microsoft or Google, you know, they are trying to uh, get away from uh, uh, the password. Sometimes they call it password less as well. So uh, again, this is this is you're gonna see uh, all over the place in the next uh, few months or few days. Uh, I mean, Google is already doing it. And again, uh, I, I, as, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I think you can enable pass keys uh, uh, in your Google system. So the idea is that instead of using uh, instead of using the password or typing the password on, on, on a particular device, you know, you could use your your cell phone, which they can send you an authenticator like a like a bit like a numerical number or something like that. You type it in your phone and then say yes, and then it will basically authenticate you. So again, yes, by all means, you can use it. And so what is your thoughts on YubiKey? So YubiKey, again, if I'm not mistaken, that's also uh, uh, a, um, a multi-factor or two-factor authentication. 
So again, I'm not endorsing any any user I have not personally used. I have not personally used YubiKey, but again, as long as they are following the industry standard, as long as they are not, uh, as long as they were not breached uh, in the past, uh, do your research and find out, you know, uh, uh, what the what the what the others talk, say about a particular vendor. So I have not personally used it. I am using Google Authenticator. I'm using Microsoft Authenticator. That's what I personally use. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, Faisal and Kyle, thank you for this information. Um, everyone has your emails and ways to contact you, so I'm sure you'll be getting uh, a, a lot of inquiries after today's uh, session. Um, for if there are other questions uh, re regarding your small business, um, we're happy to take those now. I also extend an offer to the Minnesota Chamber, the SBA, or uh, SBDC if there's any updates or things that you'd like to share with attendees about things coming up or things others should know. Yeah, do reach out to us and make sure you understand this thing that don't, you know, think this way that don't have the common you know mis mis uh, perception that hey they have not attacked us in the last 10 years they're not going to attack us now so why should i invest in cybersecurity everybody should be investing in the cybersecurity so do reach out to us we hear you when we will we will act <laughs> thank <laughs> you so much um anna yeah thank you so much uh, so anna schmuel in Minnesota District Office. So the thing that's going to bring up is already in the chat, the annual sad box government fair. So I'll just let everyone look at the chat since it's a lot of info to say. Um, and then we also have an event coming up and I'll put in there, um, building your business from the ground up. It is in conjunction with um, SEED, SBDC, US Department of Labor, Rage and our division and IRS, and that is this Thursday from four o'clock to seven at the um, Brooklyn Center at the library, um, the Brookdale Library in Brooklyn Center, and that is just really information about how to start your business. And then we have the Thrive Emerging Leaders program, which is for businesses that are looking to scale up. And so that is something we do every year and it should be going live also on Thursday, the 15th. So I'll put um, the website where that live link will be and that will also be on LinkedIn as well. So I'll put our LinkedIn and also our newsletter links in the chat. Thanks. Thank you so much for the updates. <laughs>